Hello, in this video I'm going to cover some basic um, caving rigging. So I'm going to look at how to tie the basic knots and how to do the basic um, wire hangs. Uh, I'm going to do other videos on more specific topics like the uh, uh, safety gear and um, harness setups and actually uh, ascending and descending the rope. This is just going to um, look at very basic rigging. In terms of the equipment you need, the first thing you have to consider is rope. So in terms of uh, what climbers use, they use a, a dynamic rope. So when they fall, the rope will stretch and absorb the shock. Although it's not really appropriate for caving, as uh, the, the, con the constant load can damage the rope. And also when you're ascending the rope, your weight makes the rope longer, so it is much harder to ascend it. Instead, uh, caving rope is uh, static. There is some stretch in it, although very little compared to climbing rope. And um, I personally cave on um, on quite thick ropes. These are uh, ten, 10 or 11 millimeters. The other thing is carabiners. I'll be using oval carabiners as opposed to pear-shaped ones you'd use in climbing. Um, they're much easier to thread through pulleys, uh, ascending devices are much easier to rig with just because they've got that more um, shallower curve. Now in this particular cave we have two bolts which are close together and at the same height which is the perfect opportunity to use the bunny ears knot. Here's a tutorial on how to do that. So the bunny ears is another iteration of the figure eight and you'll need a much bigger bite then the figure eight on a bike to do this. So you start off laying out your bike. Then you're going to want to make a loop in the bike. Bring around the working end, around the standing. And that's where it changes slightly. You then take another bite of the working end and pass it through loop at the top and we can cinch that down a bit you can see that we've got the figure of eight but we've got another bite on the top and to finish it we just take this loop here pass it all the way around the entire knot and then it sits we'll sit just at the top here the reason it doesn't sit at the bottom is that changes the angle of the um, standing end of the rope. So it sits at the top, and then we can tighten it up on all the strands. And that is the bunny ears. We simply put a carabiner or a melon onto each of the ears and then clip it onto each of the bolts making sure to do up the carabiners and there you have it the issue with the bunny ears is that it's very hard to set the length of each of the ears so if you have a situation where one of the bolts is much higher up in the rock like this, it means that all of the weight is going to be resting on this on this higher bolt. Now, it's not the end of the world. However, what it does mean is if if this bolt were to fail, the rope is going to free fall a few inches, and what's going to happen is it's going to shock load this bolt. <coughs> Chances are, if this bolt has failed. You know, if it's if there's particularly bad rock like there is here, or if the the bolt is rusted, there's going to be this very similar conditions for this bolt. So ideally, the both bolts need to have an equal amount of weight on them, so that if one fails, the other won't be shock loaded. So in this cave, there's two bolts that are at different heights. As I mentioned earlier, if the uh, top bolt were to fail, we'd shock load the bottom bolt which means they, they might both fail. Uh, so in this situation, we're gonna use an alpine butterfly and a figure eight on a bite to rig this. 
So here's our figure of eight on a bite. And if you want to watch, you can skip if you want to. There's a tutorial. The first knot we're going to look at is the figure of eight, which is the most useful knot, knot to know. And you can use it in almost any situation. It may not always be the most appropriate. However, if you're going to learn one knot, this is the knot to learn. Now, it's simple to tie. You make a loop in the rope. You then bring the working end all the way around the standing end like that you put the standing end through the first loop that you made and tighten you can see the eight shape now like this the knot isn't very useful however that's the basic technique for tying it the most common way of tying a figure of eight is on a bite so you take a bite of rope, which is when you just um, fold it over on itself. Then you can make quite a big bite. Make that first loop. Bring the, the working end all the way around the standing end. Like that. And pass the working end through the loop. And that's the figure of eight on a bite. And on that, you can clip your carabiner and clip it into a, um, a bolt. Um, alternatively, you can do a, a follow through figure of eight through the bolt itself, which saves using a carabiner. The tutorial is here. You can skip it again. The most common version of the figure of eight is the follow through figure of eight. And for this, you tie the basic knot about a metre into the rope. You can then pass your rope around a large object that's too big to clip a carabiner onto. And you close the loop by simply passing the rope back through on itself. So all you have to do is follow that end. You follow it through there. Pull it through. Follow it round. Keep on following it all the way. So it comes out the other end. Just stress your knot. You can see it's formed a closed loop around a large object. And that might use, be useful for putting around a tree or if you don't have a carabiner handy. So here I've tied an alpine butterfly on the standing end of the rope and I've clipped it into our bolt. Now, there's a tutorial here. The next knot I'm going to show you is the Alpine Butterfly. Alpine Butterfly is a fixed loop. It can be tied anywhere along a rope. And it takes up less rope than the figure eight on a bite. And it's better for when you're pulling on the rope in different directions other than straight down. So you make a bite. You then fold the bite round clockwise to make a loop. So a big loop there. And you cut the loop in half, fold in another loop. It makes a number eight. And this is the tricky bit. You take the top of the eight and fold it underneath the bottom of the eight. So it gives you a shape looks like that so this was the top of the eight and now you post that through this hole here in the center and that's the finished knot the alpine butterfly. Now when adjusting the alpine butterfly it may be that um, the loop needs making smaller or bigger or that you need to feed more rope into the end that goes towards your figure eight. It's fairly straightforward you just have to, to post, post slack through the knot. You do that until you have nicely equalized rope now, I've done this quite long. Ideally, um, 
this loop here going up to the bolt and the loop going up to the other bolt want to be as short as possible and that will make it much easier to get on and off the rope. Sometimes at the entrance of the cave there may be a scaffolding bar instead of bolts and to, um, to rig to this I would use a, a follow through figure of eight. So what I've done is tied my basic figure of eight, posted the working route and round the scaffold bar and then I'll simply follow through. So that's the figure of eight followed through onto the scaffold. Um, sometimes you might want to follow um, this end of the rope to a, um, a tree or a ground anchor, which would mean that you could uh, clip onto the rope and abseil horizontally along the rope to the, um, to the hole itself, to the shaft, uh, which takes away any danger of, of falling down. Uh, when you're very close to the edge of the hole before you're clipped. And in the next video, I will be looking at my harness setup um, and also how to ascend and how to descend. And let me know your thoughts on the techniques I've covered in the comments because I know a lot of people do it very differently. There may be some better methods out there than what I've shown you.